بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وعلى Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Sayyid Osman Ali talking to you today from Al Qudwa Institute here in West Yorkshire. I'm delighted to join you now for our second episode of Creed Matters. As we've already established and talked about, Creed is the fundamental basis of how we understand our religion. As people who believe in God in Allah Jalla wa ala, Ultimately, our objective is to gain closeness to Allah, to understand His religion and, and the text, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one way that we find is how we are seen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we are judged is based upon our creed, what we believe. Hence, I ask you today to listen to this discussion objectively with an open mind and see the discussion um, and the textual criticism and the evidences and then make an informed judgment regarding the topic. And the topic today is a very, very interesting one. And as ever, my partner today discussing these topics in order to enlighten us and give us a greater insight into this is our teacher, Mufti Zulfiqar Haider Pizada Al-Azhari. Shaykh, assalamu alaikum. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. Fine, and I'm happy to be here for our second episode of Creed Matters. Thank you very much for joining us. Already, Sheikh, we've discussed so much in our first episode <clears throat> regarding Creed and today's topic, which is Istighatha. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we find is a greater means of understanding a topic is by defining the words so we can great, uh, create a greater understanding. Absolutely. Some of the words associated, so I, I will read them out and then for you to define them for the viewers so we can understand them better. When we talk about istighasa, we associate that with tawassul, mm. seeking wasila, isti'ana, mm. istimdad. These are a few things associated with this. Could you shed a, a light on these words and what they mean? Okay. Often these three words we hear a lot istighasa, isti'ana, istimdad. All these three words they mean the same thing. They refer okay. to the same thing. These three words linguistically they are from according to Ilmu Tasrif, Ilmu Sarf. They're from the chapter of Istifal. Um, one of the many characteristics of this chapter, verbs that uh, come on this template, Istifal, it has over a dozen um, khasais, which are characteristics. In uh, Arabic etymology, every chapter has certain characteristics. So one of the characteristics and the most commonly used characteristic of istif'al is talabul ma'khad, right. which refers to seeking something. So all verbs that are going to be used with this characteristic will have within them the meaning of talab, to seek something. Right. So istighasa means talabul ghawth. To seek ghawth means help. Right. Isti'ana talabul aun. Aun again means help, seeking help. Istimdad talabul madad. So these three mean the same thing. Okay. Seeking help. So when it's used in a context, there's a mustaghis, the one who's seeking help. And a mustaghas behi, the one you're seeking help from. Right. So this is istighasa, istiana, and uh, istimdad, and all these three have been used in the Quran and Sunnah. And we'll okay. discuss where they've been used and how they've been used during the course of this discussion. Okay. When we come to tawassul, tawassul is slightly different. Right. In istighasa, isti'ana, istimdad, you're asking, you're seeking help from somebody. <clears throat> Tawassul, on the other hand, 
is derived from the word wasala with a seen, which means uh, to seek or to desire something. With tawassul, tawassul means to achieve something or obtain something by the means of something else. Right. Like, for example, the Arabs say, Tawassalto biddalvi ilal ma'i. That I obtained water by the means of the bucket. So when there's a well, you want to reach the water. Mm. Now to reach that, you need a means. That means is the bucket. So in tawassul, there's three things. There's the mutawassil who's doing tawassul. There's the mutawassal bihi, which is the wasila, the means. Okay. And then there's the mutawassal ilay, your ultimate objective. So when tawassul is used, you pray to Allah, but you use means, for example, of the Holy Prophet والسلام, that Ya Allah, we turn to you for our need and with the means through the Holy Prophet. So this mutawassal bihi or the wasila is used. So this third element is used in tawassul. So you're asking Allah, but you're using the means of a saint, of a prophet, uh, to ask Allah wa ta'ala for something. So this is a, a primarily the difference between istighasa, isti'ana, istimdad, and tawassul on the other side. Right. So this uh, difference people should be aware of. Regarding today's subject, mm. you know, as you mentioned, to call upon somebody else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, for a lot of people maybe listening today, a very strange concept, especially for those who may not be aware of the great history of the ulama of the Ahlul Sunnah. And they may be looking at this and saying that this is something which is hard to grasp. This this concept of asking from... Of other, asking from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and we read it in our daily prayers all the time in Surah Fatiha, that that only you we seek for assistance, for help. Absolutely. How do we understand this? So firstly, when Allah wa ta'ala says, and which means you alone we seek help from. Our isti'ana Seeking help. Isti'ana is only from you. If, like people nowadays, especially followers of Ibn Taymiyyah, because remember, there's certain interpretations of certain concepts relating to istighasa and tawassul and these sorts of things that uh, were from amongst the innovations, those interpretations, were innovations of Ibn Taymiyyah. Right. Uh, which in today's day and age have become very widespread. Um, but before Ibn Taymiyyah's time, the time of the Salaf, those interpretations did not exist, especially relating to these concepts of Tawassul and Istighasa. One thing we need to remember is like some people, and you hear a lot of speakers uh, having this opinion and preaching staunchly this opinion that we only seek help from Allah. Besides Allah, if you seek help from any, you are associating partners to Allah. This is shirk. Right. They declare everyone shirk. If this understanding that this hasr, which in Arabic is used, making it absolutely exclusive that seeking help only from Allah, other than Allah, whoever it is, it's shirk. you got a problem if you have this understanding. The problem is for, directly from the Quran, Allah wa ta'ala commands the believers. Wasta'inu, same word, nasta'in. Right. Wasta'inu, this is the fi'l amr. 
وَسْتَعِينُوا بِسَبْرِ وَسَّلَاحِ That all, you, all believers do isti'ana, seek help from sabr, patience and prayer. Now, keeping in mind your initial, those people, their initial interpretation, only Allah isti'ana. The same word is used here now. Right. And Allah is saying, seek help with prayer and with patience. Prayer, patience, is this Allah? This is not Allah. No. This is not Allah. Then, when we come to ahadith, so many ahadith where Sahaba used to go to seek help. The words isti'ana, these words istimdad, uh, they're all used in ahadith also. For example, in Sahih Bukhari, for example, in the chapter of jihad, there's a chapter in Imam Bukhari and the title of the chapter is Babul Aune Bil Madad. This is the name of the chapter. Wow. In the chapter, Imam Bukhari narrates a hadith where Imam Bukhari says, narrating from Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala that some people from these tribes, names of the Tribes are given Re'al, Zakwan, Osayya, Banu Lahyan, members of these mm -hmm. tribes. They came to the Holy Prophet. The words of the hadith of Sayyid Bukhari are ala in relation to the people. They did istimdad right. to the Holy Prophet. They seeked they sought help from the Holy Prophet and then the words of the Hadith are They done istimdad the Holy Prophet that did imdad help them. Right. So they came to the Holy Prophet and they sought help from him. So clearly the Quran is saying Seeking help from other than Allah, Sabar and Salah, a hadith, another hadith I'll present. Hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Imam Muslim narrates a statement of one of the companions of the Holy Prophet, wasalam, Rabia ibn Ka'ab. This was the name of the Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala. He says, Kuntu abitu ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa ataytuhu bi wadu'ihi wa hajatihi. I used to, during the night, spend the night with the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. And I would, fa ataytuhu, I brought for the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam wadu. Wadu with a fatha on the wow means the water that is used for ablution. Right. Wudu is the act of ablution. Wadu with a fatah on it means that water. Okay. So I used to bring the water that the Holy Prophet والسلام, is going to use for ablution. Wahajati and anything else the Holy Prophet والسلام, required, I would be to, uh, at night there to serve the Holy Prophet. One day, the Holy Prophet, I brought the wadu and whatever the Holy Prophet والسلام, required, and the Holy Prophet والسلام, said, Sal. That oh Rabi ask. That's what it means. Anything you want. The Holy Prophet didn't put any restrictions. What you can ask me, what you can't ask me, what mm -hmm. only you can ask Allah, what you can ask me, what I'm capable of. Anything you want, ask, and I will give it to you. Wow. Rasul Sahih Hadith in Sahih Muslim. The Holy Prophet والسلام, is telling the Sahabi. That whatever you want, at this moment, when I'm asking you, you don't need to ask it from Allah. Ask it from me and you'll get that thing. Wow. Subhanallah. And what does this Sahabi ask? He says, As aluka. I ask you, not Allah. I Here ask you. In, this, in this hadith, I ask you, O Messenger of Allah, murafaqataka fil jannah. That I am in your company in Jannah. Wow. What a prayer. 
The Holy Prophet said, ask whatever you want. Holy Prophet, which means what? That Allah wa ta'ala has blessed the Holy Prophet والسلام, to distribute the khaza'in and the treasures of Allah wa ta'ala howsoever he wishes. Ask whatever you want. And what does he ask? Jannah. And not only Jannah, your company or messenger of Allah in Jannah. The Holy Prophet والسلام, said, zalik, Have you got anything else you want to ask me? The Sahabi says, Qul da, That's it, Ya Rasulullah. That's all I want. Nothing else I want. Only your company in Jannah. That's it. That's all I want. Then the words of the Holy Prophet والسلام, are, Fa'a'inni ala nafsika bi kathratis sujood. A'inni, this is that from that same root isti'ana then O oh, Rabia help me for yourself by doing a lot of sajdas abundantly prostrating to Allah wa ta'ala wow. Holy Prophet is saying what you help me he's seeking help from his companion and he's using that word isti'ana subhanallah that you help me sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Holy Prophet is saying, you help me for yourself by doing a lot of sajdas too. So the Holy Prophet salatu was salam, uh, asking help from the Holy Prophet salatu was salam, besides Allah wa ta'ala, whether it's Holy Prophet salatu was salam, or it's others, Besides the Holy Prophet And I was going to mention this, Shaykh, that, you know, you mentioned regarding calling upon, as you, as, you know, mentioned in this, in this narration upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, you know, mentioned, is this same applicable to other than Prophets as Absolutely. well? Other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Numerous ahadiths. Unfortunately, shocking the, the, the time we live in and the era we live in the level of ignorance of certain speakers who don't study the books or have wrong principles right that they uh, principles which uh, they're unaware of or certain uh, interpretations they've latched onto without understanding them mm. books of hadith are, are full of examples of asking not just the holy prophet alayhi salatu was salam from other than the holy, you see, for example, this hadith I've got in front of me, Sunan of Imam Abu Dawood. In the chapter of Jihad on page 300 and, uh, 437 of this copy I have in front of me, there's a statement of the Holy Prophet والسلام, mentioned, where the Holy Prophet والسلام, said, Inna la nasta'inu bi mushrikin. The Holy Prophet oh, yeah. salatu is saying, Nasta'inu Iyaka Nasta'in. Nasta'in. Say, Nasta'in. Say, Inna la Nasta'in be mushrik. The Holy Prophet salatu salam said, We do not do isti'ana. We do not seek help from a mushrik. Now, the from question mushrik. from a mushrik. Now, the question is, why specify mushrik? If help from anyone besides Allah is shirk. Then why specify mushrik here? Specification of a mushrik means what? That we don't seek help from a mushrik, we seek help from a mu'min. Otherwise they would have said that, don't seek help from anybody. Anybody. If it was shirk, right. if it was iya kanastain, only you alone. Absolutely. Why is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa using the same word, but putting a restriction there? Be mushrik, we don't seek help from a mushrik. Specification, this takhsis, is indication that the Holy Prophet means what? We don't seek help from a mushrik, we seek help from a mu'min. Right. We seek help from a mu'min. And a mu'min is who? Other than Allah, the wa ta'ala. Numerous examples. Imam Tabarani in his mu'jam mentions this hadith. This hadith is also been mentioned by uh, Abu Ya'la in his, in his Musnad also, where it's mentioned that the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, Izan falatat dabatu ahadikum bi arde falatim. That if one of you is on a journey in the desert and in, in falatat, that the riding animal, the camel, for example, you're in desert, the camel 
escapes, goes away, runs away. Right. You don't know where it is. No one there else to help you. Holy Prophet والسلام, said, such a person should do falyunade. He should do nida. Shout out. Call mm. out. Call out who? Allah. In this hadith, the Holy Prophet والسلام, didn't say in this desperate state, call out for Allah for help. Because if you call out other than Allah, you're a mushrik. He didn't say that. He said what? Falyunade ya ibad Allah. Wow. No one there. But he's being ordered by Holy Prophet والسلام, to say, O oh, servants of Allah, O oh, slaves of Allah, Ya Ibad, Ya Ibad Allah. And in one narration, the words are, Ainuni Ya Ibad Allah. That, O oh, servants of Allah, Ainu, help me, assist me. And the Holy Prophet والسلام, said, Allah has certain servants who you can't see, but they're there to help you. Who are these? Holy Prophet والسلام, didn't explicitly explain who they were, whether they were angels, whether they were pious jinn, whether they were souls of the righteous people. Could be any. Right. Holy Prophet والسلام, mentioned this. So all these things, asking from other than Allah wa ta'ala. Similarly, there's another hadith that Imam Tabarani is mentioned. Imam, these are great muhaddisun who are quoting these ahadiths. No doubt. They said that utlubul ma'roof Seek goodness min rohama ummati from the rohama from my ummah. Rohama, yani the merciful people from my ummah. Seek goodness from them. Holy Prophet is telling you to go and seek goodness from them. Ta'ishu fi aknafihim. The Holy Prophet said, if you do that, you'll, you'll live a pleasant life under their shadow. Holy Prophet والسلام, instructing the people uh, to seek help. Similarly, there's another hadith, again, Imam Tabarani mentions, where the Holy Prophet, and this hadith, Imam Tabarani mentioned it, is narrated by so many different chains that certain soon considered it a sahih hadith. Well, even though some of the solitary chains are the if, uh, but so many different chains exist mm -hmm. that scholars authenticated it. Where the Holy Prophet والسلام, said, Utlubul khaira wal hawa'ija min hisan al wujud. That seek khair, seek goodness, wal hawa'ij, and the fulfillment of your needs, min hisan al wujud, which literally means, hisan al wujud literally means the one whose faces are physically and, uh, and full of physical and spiritual beauty. Wow. Seek goodness from them. Holy Prophet. Why is the Holy Prophet telling the Ummah to seek from other than Allah? If your interpretation is correct, if you say Iyaka Nasta'in means you can only do istiana from Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala, and besides Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala, it's all shirk. Why is Holy Prophet والسلام, and even in the Quran was Ta'inu bi Sabri was and Holy Prophet والسلام, doing istiana himself? The, people, companions do, seeking help from him, the Prophet ordering people go and seek uh, seek uh, the fulfillment of your needs from these people. When you're alone and you've got no one, call out Ya Ibad Allah to Ibad Allah. So clearly there's something wrong with your interpretation. So how, you know, going back to Surah Fatiha, Iyya Kanastain, how should we understand that and after understanding regarding the concept of Istigatha, how do we reconcile right. with that? So, what we need to understand is clearly Iyaka Nasta'in means you alone be seek help. Right. Now, how do we reconcile when these ahadiths are talking about seeking help from the Holy Prophet, seeking help from Ibadullah, seeking help from Min Ihsan al all this? when help supposed to be only for Allah. In order to understand this, there's a concept, a linguistic concept of the Arabic language, which has to be applied in order to re reconcile and create harmony in these apparent contradictory opinions okay. or interpretations. Right. 
And this concept that we teach in books like Mukhtasarul Ma'ani, books of Ilmul Balagha, uh, one of the sciences of Ilmul Balagha is Ilmul Ma'ani. And in all books of Balagha, this topic of Isnad is mentioned and explained. So like for example, uh, there is something which is called Al Isnadul Majazi in Arabic rhetoric. Okay. Al Isnadul Majazi. Or Al Majazul Akli, Al Majazul Hukmi, Majaz Fil Isba, various different names that refer to the same concept. Mm -hmm. Now, the concept, this Majaz Akli, which literally translated would be a rational metaphor. Right. Rational metaphor. The definition of this that's mentioned in books of Balagha is Isnadul Fi'li aw Ma'na ila Mulabisin ghayri ma huwa lahu bi That ascribing an action to something but that something or someone I'm giving a very simple okay. uh, explanation of this mm. uh, concept just to make the viewers who are not well aware of these sciences right. to understand. So ascribing an action to someone or something when that, that someone or something is not the real doer of the action, is not the real agent of the action, mm -hmm. but you're still ascribing because it's related to the action. Bitta Avvalin, there must be some sort of uh, contextual reasoning that turns you away from ascribing it to the real doer. Now, before it gets more complicated, <laughs> let me explain it Please. with an example. <laughs> like, for example, the scholars of Ilmul Balagha, they give an example. Common example in all books of Balagha. Something that normal person like normal myself person the, understand. and the viewers could understand. understand. Okay. They say, Ambata Rabi ul Pakla. The rain, one of the meanings of Ravi is rain. The rain caused the buckle, which means plants. The rain caused the buckle to grow. Right. Caused the plants to grow. Okay. They say, you know, if there's a believer in Allah, he's a Muslim, he believes in Allah, in the Creator. And he's saying this statement that the rain caused the plants to grow. They say this is majaz akli. Rain doesn't cause the plants to grow. It's Allah who causes the plants to grow. The right. real doer is who? Allah. But you're ascribing this action of causing to grow to the rain. Why? Because the rain is a suburb. Means. Means. Right. For the plants to grow. Yeah. The real ta'thir and the uh, the real cause for the plant to grow is Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. No doubt. So we will say that the one who said this because he's a mu'min, he's a Muslim, he used majaz akli. Right. That he used, rain caused it to grow, that's majaz akli. Real cause, the real doer of the action in Ba'ath causing to grow is Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Right. So this is what Majaz Akli is. Do you understand? Yes. I, if, to give an example, yeah. how I understand this, like for example, when we go to the doctor, right. for example, Absolutely. and uh, go to the doctor, the doctor prescribes medicine or tells us what to stay away from, abstain from. And when we get better, we 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 say that you know the doc the doctor healed us with his advice and that even though we believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the true giver of health absolutely so because we're understanding that even when we say the doctor helped us we mean that the, even though the health was given by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala yes so this is majaz akli right when you're saying 
that the doctor helped me, the doctor yes. cured me. Yes. You know that it's Allah in reality who cured you, but you're uh, attaching this action to the doctor because right. he's a means. He's a means. He's a means of your healing. Even though we believe Allah to be Shafi, he's, he's the healer. So, so now my question: If if you if anyone says this, the doctor healed me. Has he done shirk? Not if he doesn't believe. That's it. Right. He's using it metaphorically. So that's how you, you would understand that. Yeah, if you sat down and said and asked him, uh, you just said the doctor healed you. Didn't Allah heal you? He'll explain. Right. And you, say, say, and you say, of course. Uh, of course Allah healed. healed me. Right. Ultimate healing came from Allah. Absolutely. Uh, so this is what majaz akli or isnad majazi, this sort of ascription. Right. Um, like for example, in Arabic, they, they say, which means that I relieved him from hunger. Right. I, I fed him so much, relieved, gave him food. Yeah. gave him food so much, relieved his hunger. Now, the actual relief from hunger came from Allah. Wa right. But there's nothing wrong with saying that because if you're a Muslim, if you're a Muslim and you believe in Allah, uh, then you've just become a suburb. The actual khalq and creation of relief from hunger came from Allah wa right. And this majaz akli is used numerous places in the Quran. Like for example, when Allah wa ta'ala talks about the story of Sayyidina Musa salam and Fir'aun and says, Yuzabbihu abna'ahum, that mm -hmm. he, Fir'aun, singular is used. He used to do what? Slaughter your sons. Now did he go and slaughter all the Bani Israel, all their sons? With his army, yes. his soldiers. Yes. So because he was the one who ordered them. Right. So the action is ascribed to this in Majaz Akli. Okay. So now, once we understand what Isnad Majazi and Majaz Akli is, we're going to apply this to the text. To you. our discussion. Okay. When we say, Iyaka Nasta'i, you alone we worship. Uh, you alone we seek help from. And when we seek help from Allah, wa that oh Allah help us. Any sort of istiana to Allah wa ta'ala. What do we believe? We believe that we're asking help from a God. Who's qadirun bizzat. Who has power from himself. Yes. He hasn't received any power from anyone else. It's his own power. He's, he's mustaqil. Independent from anyone else. That's what we believe. When we seek help from anyone besides Allah Taala, from like all these ahadith that we went through, isti'ana of the Prophet, istimdad, istimdad, companions going to the Prophet, asking from the Prophet, Prophet helping them, all of this, from whether it's from the Holy Prophet والسلام, or whether it's from the saints, pious people, all of this is what, when we seek help, our belief is what? That these personalities are aswab, their means. We're yeah. asking help from them. They are helping us. We're seeking help from them. They're not our God. Right. We don't have that belief that they're our gods. We don't think that they're mustaqil. They have istiqlal, independence, that everything they're giving is from themselves. No. We believe whatever they have is from Allah. Right. They have become the means. The real, just like the doctor example, doctor healed me. Yes. Real comes from Allah. Allah. Nothing wrong with going to a doctor and saying, doctor, I've got this, can you heal me? Got this illness, I need your help. Because even the knowledge that the doctor has acquired to cure someone is knowledge granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely, absolutely. Going to a doctor say, help me. Huh? Nothing wrong with this. Right. Similarly, because your belief is ultimate cure comes from Allah. Similarly, when we ask anything from besides Allah, the prophets, the awliya, our belief is what? That it comes from Allah. They are the means. They are the means. Because the opposite of that situation is that if someone was to take it literally, mm -hmm. then in a situation where I would need a doctor, I'm unwell or I've had an accident, then, then I would I should call out directly to Allah and not call the doctor or the 999. You had accident, you've broken your leg, you're on the side of the road. Right. Sit there, don't call 999. Call out to Allah. That's not the way. 
even though we believe Allah is the one who will cure us, but we find means in order to. This is what Prophet right. is teaching us. Go to these people. Right. The issue fi akna fi him. You live a pleasant life under their shadow. Why is Prophet doing this? Right. When you when you had an accident, your leg is broken. You're on the road. Call nine nine nine. Prophet ﷺ, go to these people, ask them their means. Right. This is not shirk. This is teachings of Islam. Something I hear often, Shay, um, and maybe you can shed some light on it today, especially for the viewers, so we can gain a better understanding. Um, especially from scholars from the modern Salafi movement, mm. they state that in certain, if certain conditions are met, right. you could say that istighatha can be can be practiced. Um, they say that if the person is alive. If the person is present and if the person is able to do so, then asking someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is jayz, is permissible. How do we understand this? So firstly, when they come up with these conditions, where did they get these conditions from? Who from the Salaf said these are conditions? This is our first response. Right. Where is this found? Where is this found? Yes. Which Sahabi, which Tabi'i? Where in the Quran, where in the Hadith it says these are conditions, only then you can do istighasa, otherwise you can't do istighasa. Where you got these from? From, from Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Najdi and Ibn Taymiyyah? This is not the opinion of the Jamahir, the vast majority of the scholars throughout our history. Individuals who had these opinions. Right who left the majority and that's why they had problems in their life in Muthaymiya. Meaning the, meaning the majority, majority of scholars from all times. From time of Salaf. Where are these opinions? Right. And on the other hand, we can mention numerous Muhaddisun and Mufassirun and Fuqaha who didn't have this opinion. And it's not according to the way of the Salaf. The Salaf didn't believe in this. For example, one Hadith which is absolute sound of this. No question. By consensus of all of the scholars. Absolutely even, authentic. Absolutely, even Albani says this. Right. Narrated by Imam Tirmazi, Ibn Majah, numerous other muhaddisun. And But Ibn Majah here, he mentions it in the chapter called what has been mentioned in relation to Salatul Haja. Right. Salatul Haja, prayer of need when you're in need. The words are, it's narrated by Uthman ibn Hunayf. Absolute sound of this. That Anna Rajulan Darir al Basare Atan Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That a man who was blind, the real al-Basr. He came to the Holy Prophet And he said what? Said to the Holy Prophet That, O Messenger of Allah, pray for me that Allah cures me from my blindness. So he's doing what? Now, the, initially, as I'm explaining this, I'll highlight certain aspects so they become clear in people's okay. mind. He could have prayed at home by himself. Right. Allah wa ta says in the Quran that whenever anyone calls me, I'm close to him. Right. I listen to the prayers. He could have prayed home. Understand Akida from these people. Mm. Sahaba, Salaf. Blindness. That was his illness. Couldn't see. And what does he decide to do? I'll go to the messenger of Allah and ask him to pray for me. There's a difference between me praying and the messenger and beloved of Allah praying. He walks, goes to Holy Prophet ﷺ. He says this. Now the Holy Prophet ﷺ's reply. Holy Prophet والسلام, says, In shi'ta akhartu laka wa huwa khair. If you want, 
I can delay this for you, praying for you, for mm -hmm. your cure, and that will be better for you. What in shit that the old do. And if you want, I'll pray for you. The man says that Ya Rasulullah, pray for me. That's what I want. Now, the Holy Prophet والسلام, says, okay, if you want your illness cured, go and perform wudu. Why you And pray two units of prayer. After you've prayed these two units of prayer to Allah Taala, then make a dua, but in the dua use these words that I'm teaching you now. That's it. Say, Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi Muhammadin Nabiyyi Rahma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After this two units pray, O oh Allah, I ask you and I turn to you. Be Muhammad in Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Through the Holy Prophet who is the Prophet of Mercy. That's the wasu. Uses a wasila, the Holy Prophet Holy Prophet is teaching the Sahabi to do this. Wow. Then the Holy Prophet says, after you said this, then you need to say this also. Ya Muhammad. Remember, the Holy Prophet said, go and do wudu and pray at home. Oh, wherever. Right. He didn't say, go and do wudu, come right here right. so that I'm present in front of you. Go and do wudu. Then say, Ya Muhammad. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inni katawajahtu bika ila rabbi fi hajati. Hazihi li tuqda. That, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Surely I have turned to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala Bika through you By means of you I've used you as the wasila So that my need Can be fulfilled Okay, these words And in other narrations In other books of hadith The words are That when he did this And he went back It was as though he had never been blind SubhanAllah Straight, immediate When he used the wasila of a holy prophet Alayhi salatu wasalam I think it's so profound that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or whenever I read this, it, one, one of the things I always notice that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could have granted the wish there. There. But he advises the Sahabi, the companion, to go away and to do this prayer, which and, is so profound. And also, the Holy Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam could have taught him a dua which according to people was free from shirk. Right. According Absolutely. to people. But in fact, the Prophet also is Prophet teaching Prophet is teaching it. How yeah. can it be shit? Absolutely. You've got your interpretations wrong. The Prophet could have said, go after you've prayed two units to Allah wa ta'ala, then go to Allah and beg him and him only. The Holy Prophet said, no. I Say mean, these words, Ya Muhammad, inni katawajjahtu bika ilallah. Wow. That I, O oh Muhammad, addressed the Holy Prophet even though he wasn't with the Holy Prophet. And you could say, based upon the conditions that they set, present. that the Prophet also wasn't present. Yeah. He didn't this. say, come and be present in my presence. So you could stretch and say, as according to them, the actions of this Sahabi, to them, could be a means of shirk. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, these people don't understand their principles of innovation. Completely innovations. They don't understand where they lead to. Right. How dangerous they are. Absolutely. What you what are you going to start describing the Sahaba as? How could we know better than you those can, to spend time with the You Prophet can call Sahabha. everyone nowadays mushrik, but what about the Sahaba? Absolutely. This very dangerous concept. People say that, you know, in, in that in that instance, the Prophet Sallallahu were alive, they were present. So the companions could go and ask them for help. Even in this instance, they say, you know, they were still alive. In that, is there any other instances so many, so in where the Prophet ﷺ had passed and the companions had, had done the, this kind of dua? The Salaf, scholars after them, throughout the centuries, 
have used this dua for qada'ul hajat for this for for their needs being fulfilled for example i've got imam tabarani's mu'jam in front of me in the fourth volume of imam tabarani's mu'jam page 415 imam tabarani narrates a hadith from abi umama ibn sahal ibn hunayf an ammihi Uthman ibn Hunayf from Abu Umama the son of Sahal ibn Hunayf he narrates from his uncle Uthman ibn Hunayf right that we've just mentioned that we mentioned who already narrated that story right sahi story that story so the nephew narrates this story from Uthman ibn Hunayf and he says that in the time of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan third khalifa in his time there was a person who had some haja some need mm-hmm. and many times he went to sayyidna usman ibn affan for his need and sayyidna usman ibn affan radiyallahu ta'ala gave no attention to him and his need was not fulfilled so many numerous times multiple times So this man he complains about this to Usman ibn Hunayf the narrator of that hadith right Usman ibn Hunayf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he says to that man that go to the place where you perform wudu perform wudu come to the masjid pray two units of salah and then make dua but only use these words that i'm going to teach you allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi nabiyyina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyyir rahma ya muhammad inni atawajjahu bika ila rabbi fa taqdi li hajati aur fa tuqda so the same words that he heard same from the word. prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught same, same words and again holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has passed away now right. this is the time of the third caliph third caliph and the words same words that i've just explained are being taught by a sahabi to this man wow he goes does wudu reads the two units reads this dua and then goes to uthman ibn affan radiyallahu ta'ala and as soon as he reaches the door the bawab the doorkeeper or gatekeeper takes him by the hand straight away to say no smart ibn afar radiyallahu ta'ala the amirul mu'minin at the time asks him to sit next to him ask him what your haja is what's your need fulfill that need straight away ask if you got any other need to come to me for everything right this person for numerous time before no attention by saying that Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala now all his need is fulfilled he goes back to Uthman ibn Hunayf right and he says to Uthman ibn Hunayf that thank you for talking to say that Uthman amirul mu'minin because my need was fulfilled and his reply was wallahi ma kallamtuhu by allah i haven't even spoken to him about you wow but i knew your need would be fulfilled because this happened in the time of the holy prophet alayhi salatu wassalam when a blind man came and then he told all of this to him subhanallah scholars salaf they all acted on these things so now if it's only for people who are alive the holy prophet alayhi salatu wassalam wasn't alive here right so where have you got this understanding from because it's not in harmony with what the books are teaching us One of the reasons why I think that the conditions as we've gone through obviously mm. the alive and the present you know there's examples multi- m- numerous examples as yes. you as you mentioned mm. that uh, negate these conditions absolutely so, um when they say that a person was alive yeah they assume that when a person is dead when the person passes away mm. that the ruh or the person the soul doesn't have the capabilities to help somebody mm. they're not able 
Right. After a person passes away. So firstly, from this hadith that I've just mentioned, clearly the Prophet was able. He, right. he was called out for help. Right. Holy Prophet والسلام, after uh, his physical uh, departure from the dunya, the Holy Prophet والسلام, is aware of his ummah, prays for his ummah. All these things are proven. But the problem certain people nowadays have that, oh, these saints, they've passed away. What ability do they have now? They don't have any ability. They can't help. You're asking them for help. So just because these people who have these objections, they are followers predominantly of Ibn Taymiyyah and his circle and Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab Nagdi. These are these minor groups in our history. Right. I've got Kitab al Ruh of the student of Ibn Taymiyyah. You see, you said those people don't have ability because they passed away now. They don't right. have ability. They're not able. Where have you got this understanding from? Hmm. Doesn't the Quran also talk about those who've been martyred in the path of Allah, don't even call them dead, they're alive? Absolutely. Your understanding that they have no uh, connection with this dunya, they can't help anyone, they can't... Where have you got these understandings from? Because this was not the understanding of even your own Imams. Right. Ibn, Ibn al-Qayyim in his Kitab al Ruh on page 269. And a lot of these people, they have these sorts of, uh, after reading certain books of Tasawwuf and written by certain Sufis, and they talk about, you know, this uh, stories of the Sufis and the dreams of the Sufis, and they get, they start thinking and making up their own concepts. Right. So this is Ibn al Qayyim now. He says that now there's a lot of things he's mentioned about the ruh, the soul, and how when a person goes to sleep, he sees people in his dreams, he sees certain souls, meets people who are not even alive. Mm -hmm. What's the reality of those? Does he actually does he act actually meet those people. All these things are discussed by okay. Ibn al-Qayyim. But I don't want to go too much into okay. other topics. I just want to focus on uh, answering the question you specified. Ibn al-Qayyim says, min asnaf bani Adam ala arwahi That visions from all different types of people have reached the level of Tawatu. Tawatu. Can't be denied. What are these visions about? About the actions of souls after death. Right. Actions of souls after, after death. death. And the ability that certain souls have, even though those people have died, but they have a certain qudra after death which is far greater than the qudra they had when those souls were attached to the bodies. Wow. That far qudra, greater. Far greater. Wow. So to nice. such an extent that Ibn al Qayyim says that certain souls, their stories, undeniable, can't be denied, where one soul of a righteous person, for example, or two souls, mm -hmm. or al-adadul qalil, or a few, few souls, they've defeated large armies. There's a battle, there's few Muslims on one side, large army of Kufar, and 
few souls have come to assist and they've defeated a, a large army and ibn kaim says that wa kam qad ru'iya nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ma'ahu abu bakr wa umar fi an-nawm how many times has this happened that the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasallam has been seen in a dream with shaykhain with sayyidna abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala an sayyidna umar radhiyallahu ta'ala an and there was a battle between muslims and and the non believers mm-hmm. there was a battle taking place and somebody sees a dream that the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam with sayyidna abu bakr and sayyidna umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhuma are there to the the souls are there and coming to assist the muslims and even though the armies of the non believers was far greater and the army of the muslim was few in number but they defeated the souls assisted to defeat wow subhanallah so, a lot of other explanation ibn qayyim gives but this is the imam of these people who saying that souls have power such power that is far greater than the power they had when they were alive and they help the living so it goes to show that so the, you, a, the able aspect of it that was to say that a person who is passed away can be even more able to do something absolutely. than he was when he was even present and alive and alive and this is your imam either reject your imam he's got it all wrong come out and say he's got it all wrong i think it's been a great insight into firstly defining these different things and now that we know that it's been established within the hadith the call of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sahaba practiced it and it's something that we've discovered is not just for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but also for the pious and we see examples once again from uh, hadith from the hadith and this and that so inshallah um to expand this further inshallah i'm wary of time mm-hmm. and uh, to conclude this segment um we've established already that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and others from the prophet like the saints can be used for istighasa absolutely, to call absolutely. and this is something which has been the predominant opinion of the scholars of the ahl sunnah So inshallah in the next segment inshallah we will discuss more so that why is there so much misconception regarding these things and some of the statements that even there's some misconception within people of the ahl sunnah followers of the sufia and we will inshallah address those misconceptions inshallah, uh, inshallah the the debate is already steaming hot as you can see and uh, there's so much left to be discussed so don't forget to join us after the break inshallah assalamu alaikum